Hey kids, welcome to Papa's Bible Stories. Each week or two, I pick a Bible story to talk to my kids about. I have a beautiful son, Jacob, who is seven, and a beautiful daughter, Leah, who is four. And these stories are for them. But even though these stories are for my kids, Jacob, Leah, and I would love it very much if you decided to join us. What do you say? Let's get started. Okay, so last week we were talking about Noah. Noah had built a big, huge ark. And for 120 years, he had warned all the people that a big flood was coming. But after warning all the people for 120 years, no one believed. No one listened, and no one changed. And so, the day came. God told Noah and his family to go into the ark. And after they had gone into the ark, all the different kinds of animals, insects, and birds followed them, all on their own. And after everyone and everything was safely in the ark, the big door on the side of the ark started to close, all on its own. God had told the animals to go into the ark, and God was closing the door. And the door closed with a big, loud thud. The people outside the ark must have watched all this with eyes wide open and jaws dropped. Had Noah been right? Should we have believed him? What was going to happen next? Well, as soon as the door closed... The people must have felt their hearts in their stomachs, and felt scared, and maybe even sorry. And they were watching very carefully for the flood to come. But then, nothing happened. Then the sun went down at the end of the day, and people went to bed thinking maybe something would happen overnight. But the sun rose the next day, and nothing had happened. And the whole next day went by. And the next and the next six whole days went by, and nothing happened. By then, Noah must have started to look a little silly, being cooped up in that ark with all those animals and with nothing happening. And by the seventh day, the people weren't feeling scared or sorry anymore. And the Bible says that they had all gone back to their normal lives, lives full of evil and violence. But on the seventh day, something started to happen. The winds started to blow. The skies got dark. Lightning crackled in the sky, and the thunder boomed. And then, for the first time ever, it started to rain. And by rain, I mean it rained. The Bible says that the windows of heaven were opened. The Bible also says that the fountains of the great deep were broken up. So what water was coming down from the sky like crazy, and from the ground too, big huge jets of water, like a hundred fire hoses, shot up in the air. Very quickly, the rivers overflowed, and then there was water everywhere, and the water kept getting higher and higher and higher, And the Bible says the waters increased and lifted up the ark and it rose high above the earth. And the water kept getting even more higher until it covered all the mountains and there was no land anywhere on the whole earth. And the Bible says all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man, everyone, and everything that was not in the ark died. For 40 days, which is over a month, it rained 
without letting up. And then, on the 41st day, the rain stopped, and the sun came out. And Noah would have opened the small window on the side of the ark to look around. And he would have seen blue water in every direction. The whole world was underwater. And for three and a half months, Noah, Noah's family, and all the animals bobbed calmly in the sun on the open blue water. After the three and a half months, the Bible says that God made a wind to pass over the earth. Now, why would God cause a wind to pass over the earth? Well, when wind blows on water, the water evaporates. When the water evaporates, it disappears into the air and causes the water level to go down. So, this was God's way of starting to get rid of some of the water. But, when a strong wind blows on an ocean or a lake, what happens? That's right. Waves. A strong wind on the water causes waves. And the stronger the wind, the bigger the waves. And the waves must have started to rock the ark up and down and side to side, knocking people and animals over and making people sick. Now, have you kidzos ever been in a boat with an animal? Like, say, a dog? I'm pretty sure you kidzos have been in a boat with a dog at least once before. Maybe in your great uncle's boat with his dog? Now, not all dogs, but most dogs, just like most animals, get pretty scared just being in a boat. They don't like it at all. Never mind being in a boat when there's huge waves. Now try to imagine what it would have been like in the ark when the big huge waves started. Can you imagine being in a boat with a scared lion or a petrified rhinoceros? Can you imagine being in a boat with thousands of these animals? When the wind started, it must have been crazy inside the ark. Absolute chaos. But God hadn't forgotten about Noah and his family. He was still watching over them. And just like how God took care of them when the flood came, he was going to take care of them now. And so, God guided the ark so that it was floating just above a mountain. And as the waters went down a little bit, the ark came to rest on top of that mountain. And once the ark was resting on the mountain, the waves wouldn't have been able to rock the boat back and forth anymore. Whoa, I bet they were super happy when the ark rested on that mountain and they stopped getting thrown around everywhere. But outside, the wind continued to blow and blow, and the water continued to go down and down. Two and a half months after the ark rested on the mountain, Noah looked out the window one day and saw land. He could just make out the tops of some mountains. They all must have been so happy. It was the first time since the flood started seven months ago that Noah and his family had seen anything out the window but water. And now, if they weren't already, they were probably starting to get antsy. I mean, they'd been cooped up in the ark with all kinds of stinky animals and old food for seven months now. When were they going to get out of this ark? Now, for whatever reason, Noah wasn't able to see very much outside the ark. And they were all getting antsy and curious to know whether the water had gone down enough for them to leave the ark. So, a month and a half after they saw the mountaintops, Noah decided to release a bird and uh, see what happened. So, Noah picked a raven and he let it go out the small window on the side of the ark. And after he let it go, 
Noah could see it kind of flying around here and there. So, Noah waited a week and decided to release another bird. This time, a dove. And the dove flew around for a little while and came back to the window. After another week, Noah released the dove again. And again it flew around for a little while and came back to the window. But this time, it had a freshly picked olive leaf in its beak. Great news. Things were actually growing out there. So it was finally time to get out of this ark, right? Well, not quite. God had told them when to go into the ark and had closed the door of the ark. And Noah was going to wait for God to tell them when to leave the ark. You see, even though the waters had gone down a lot, God was still taking care of Noah and his family. And Noah trusted God. It probably wasn't safe out there yet, and God didn't want them to go out until it was safe. After the dove came back with an olive leaf, Noah and his family were in the ark for another four months, which meant that they had been in the ark for a whole year and a month. You know, if it hadn't been stinky before, it would have been stinky by then. They must have been so ready to get out of there. But after the huge long wait to hear from God, finally God came to Noah and said, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds and cattle and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, so that they may abound on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. At last, it was time to leave the ark. The door opened, and Noah, his family, and all the animals, birds, and insects burst out of the ark. They would have breathed in the fresh air, felt the ground with their hands and feet, and ran around in the nice open space. God had saved them and been so good to them. And they were so thankful. As a way of saying thank you to God, the Bible says, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took of every clean animal and every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And God saw how thankful Noah was, and saw the offerings that Noah had offered. And then God did something amazing. God said, I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Noah and his family looked up and saw the very first rainbow. Do you kids always remember the first time you saw a beautiful, bright rainbow? It was something, wasn't it? The rainbow was God's promise that never again would there be a flood that would cover the whole earth. And that promise is for us too, kidzos. You, me, mama, and everyone else. But for us, 6,000 years after the flood, the rainbow has another meaning. You see, while God is never going to destroy the world again with a flood, he will indeed destroy the world again one day. You see, the world will again become evil and corrupt and violent. But this time, instead of God's people going into an ark, God's people are going to go to heaven. So, when we 
go through evil, corrupt, and violent times, we can look at the rainbow and think about Noah. And remember that God took care of Noah and his family during dark times. And that God will take care of us during dark times too. All right, kidzos, that's it for this episode. So what do you guys think about the story? A lot of crazy stuff happened, right? Well, in a week or two, we're going to pick up the story again with the Tower of Babel. And to all the kids tuning in, I hope you have an awesome day, God be with you, and I hope we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.